Hello, I'm Christine Katanak. I am intergenerational missioner for Hereford Diocese and for Ross on Wye. And this morning I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the theme of lifelines because it's a word that I've heard in quite a lot of context the last few weeks. So I live in uh, near Ross on Wye in a, a house with quite a lot of people. There are seven of us in the main house and uh, there are four children who are here, not all of the time, but quite a lot of the time. And there are um, three adults. And we found with teenagers, we often think about Wi-Fi and how Wi-Fi is like a lifeline to them. In fact, I think we've even called it lifeblood at times. So we notice if we book a holiday or anything like that, the first question is, um, is there going to be Wi-Fi? And is it good Wi-Fi? And even in this house, we've had to rig up the whole house so that different parts of the house have different Wi-Fi because it's a bit of a funny old house and the walls are thick and the Wi-Fi doesn't seem to want to go around the corners. So we have quite a, a clever arrangement here, but even sometimes the Wi-Fi will go wrong or shut down and you can suddenly hear teenagers um, shouting and getting anxious. And the same, if we're trying to use, we're trying to download or watch a, a film or something, um, our connection will quite often go and we always say, oh, that's because the teenagers are, are drinking the Wi-Fi. And so Wi-Fi is a, a funny analogy, isn't it, for a lifeline? But I sometimes think that during this time of lockdown that they, these teenagers, the kids, would do the best out of all of us because they're so used to being connected online and they live half of their lives online. And uh, sometimes I wonder if they didn't have to eat, if they would ever actually come out of their bedrooms. But what we have found is that my son, for example, every year around his birthday, he organises a, uh, a gaming marathon with, with three of his friends and they stay up all night and they game you know, online. So they're playing all these different games and they're actually all online together and with other people. But this year, because of lockdown, they couldn't do that. They had to um, they had to be in separate houses, so you wouldn't have thought it would have made any difference. But actually, they ended up giving up early this time. And when I said to to Finn, you know, why why did you give up early? And he said, it just wasn't the same. It would have been much better if we could have done it in real life, even though we were going to be gaming online. It's just good to be together. My daughter, she's very sociable and she has really struggled through this whole time of not being able to see people. And now that, that things are better, she's doing better. And she found that, you know, I thought the same. If you sit next to her, her phone is constantly buzzing with all the many messages and all the different um, chat groups that she's in. And, you know, it reminds me uh, a little bit of uh, the sort of Borg mentality from uh, Star Trek of um, the hive mentality that we can't decide where we're going or what we're doing unless we talk to seven different people at the same time. So again, this whole lifeline of phones and technology, I, I thought would really be good for her. But she also really struggled and said there's only so much you can do or say online and eventually it becomes not real and it's really when she's been able to go and have birthday parties in people's gardens where you know they can't touch each other but they can be together uh, or where she's been able to go for walks she's taken up to walking the dog a lot and being out with other people who live out here in the middle of nowhere that can you know walk two meters apart from one another at one time um, but they can be outside and it means they can spend time together to, to her real life has been the lifeline Toast. It's such a simple thing, isn't it? Toast. And yet we found it has started something amazing at St Mary's. You know, if you want Jimmy in your video, you really, you need toast. It's such powerful stuff. I'm reminded a bit of um, when Jesus is telling the parable that talks about the yeast and how the woman puts the yeast in a, a massive quantity of flour but it spreads all through the, the flour and how it, um, it changes the flour. 
And really, the idea of toast is really a toddler group. It's very simple, but it's all based around toast. And what we've found is that we've um, we've managed to um, here you go, Jim. <laughs> we've managed to carry on online, and it's oh, of course it's not been the same. We really, really missed our mums and our little little toast eaters. And the toast makers are all the helpers, and they have really missed interacting in real life and using the fantastic um, facilities that we are lucky enough to have at St Mary's. But actually, um, what we've managed to do is create um, a quite a structured online a Zoom toast meeting every week for the last however many weeks it's been. And we've done things like storytelling and um, dancing and singing and scavenger hunts and things to try and entertain the little people and we found that it's really drawn in especially older siblings who are being homeschooled seem to really enjoy it and um we last week we had um a an online evening really for the mums and dads and carers were all welcome to come and we made them little goodie bags and um they really caught on to the idea. I didn't know if it would work, I didn't know if it would be a waste of money, but actually it seemed to really bless people. And that's really been what Toast has been all about. The philosophy of it has been about blessing people like that yeast. So, you know, when people come into the church in real life, we, we just want to bless them and love them and listen to them and, and uh, build relationships with them. And that's our agenda is just to bless and to love. And by carrying that on online, you know, we haven't reached as many people, but the ones that we have reached have really said to us, it's been like a lifeline. Christine, it's been like a lifeline to us. And some of those are toast eaters and some of those are toast makers. So we've all found that, um, you know, having to think differently and, and do things in a way that isn't natural to any of us has actually <laughs> been really good. Sorry, Jimmy, more toast for you. Online services, phone calls, letters, emails, all of these have been lifelines to many of our congregations during the season of lockdown and this strange limbo land we're in now. But the research shows that actually people outside of the church, the number one lifeline for them has been prayer. And when I originally wrote this um, reflection, it was based on Psalm 139, which is one of my favourites. And it says this, O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts, even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say, even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and you follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. It's just such an awesome, awesome psalm. And it's awesome that it's in the Bible. And it tells us how God, God knows me. He knows you. He knows each one of us. He knows everything about us. And to me, that is just such an awesome thought. And when... I am praying. That's a thought that I keep in my mind and that's a way that I connect with God. Now, during the lockdown, um, we've had our nephew living, living with us some of the time and uh, he and I have, have started this project called Prayer Box. And Prayer Box is a bit like prayer stations in school, but it's a way of doing it in ho at home. And it's just been a great delight to both of us to learn more about prayer and to think of creative ways in which we can pray. Have a look at this. It gives you a little glimpse of not just uh, what we've been doing, but also James's delight really at the process. Let's put them, put them in the box. So is it running, yeah? Yeah. Have you set it off? Okay. Yeah. All right, so James, what have we got in the prayer box today? So today in the prayer box, we have got... Oh, what's those? Holding crosses. Holding crosses. 
These look nice. So how do we use these? With a holding cross, you can hold it. Hold it in your hand. Yeah. Or you can put it in your pocket. Oh yeah. If you're having a hard day, you can put it in your pocket. So how does it feel when you're holding the holding cross? It feels quite calming. Quite, uh, yeah. It's just, quite calming, yeah. yeah. What what is it about it, do you think? Why does it feel calm? What's it made of? It's made of wood. It's made of wood, yeah. And it's funny, isn't it? When you hold it in your hand, you get that sense, you know, you think about holding on to the cross. Well, you literally are holding on to the cross, aren't you? So sometimes when we pray and we just quiet ourselves, but we hold something, then we can touch it, we can feel it, can't we? And it can it can change us, it can make us feel calm. And you're right, if you're having a hard day, sometimes putting it in your pocket and taking it with you is a really nice thing to do, yeah. Okay. That was so good, yeah! Anyone who knows me knows that I love to pray. I love praying in groups, I love praying out loud, I love praying spontaneously, I love written down prayers as well, and I love to pray with people and for people. But in this time of lockdown, I think the thing that I've learned the most about prayer is how to pray silently. And that I've learned that in silence, um, I can receive this incredible peace that surpasses my understanding and is available to each one of us all of the time from a God who knows everything about us. What a tremendous lifeline that is. I love this quote by Franciscan sister Elia Delio. She writes, prayer is the way to life because in prayer we are invited to change and to grow in love. I wonder what your lifelines have been 